The week started off with a bad cold, but I just decided to run right through. Well, hello everyone. Welcome back to Running Otaku. I am the Running Otaku, and this is the Boston Marathon Sub 3 Journey, episode 15, Adversity. Why is it called Adversity? Well, you see, I got sick this week, finally, as I usually do in January. Although this time, I think there was a real reason. You see, last Sunday, I had my two hour and 10 minute long run, and it actually went really well. The problem is that it was raining the whole time, and it was cold maybe 39 degrees Fahrenheit or three, four degrees Celsius. And the combination was enough to get me sick. So before getting into how I overcame this kind of minor adversity, just a quick update into where I am. I have just completed week seven of my 18 weeks of this training cycle, which means I've got 11 weeks to go. And so far I feel pretty good. I've actually hit every workout I've uh, been running since a little before the cycle, since December 3rd, and I believe that's 55 days in a row without uh, a break. And I don't have any undue fatigue. I don't have any hints of any overuse injuries or anything like that. So, so far, so good. So let's go to the trusty iPad and see what I did for the week. The first run on Monday uh, was 30 minutes, very easy, four miles, six kilometers. Um, and you'll see that uh, a few times in the week where I've just got very, very easy runs because the idea is to reach full recovery or pretty close to it and really focus on the hard runs. And yep, Tuesday was one of those hard runs. So the total run time was one hour and 15 minutes. Um, and there were two hard parts to it. There was warm up and cool down and some extra mileage in there. but. There was a four mile tempo run at six minutes and seven seconds per mile, which is three minutes and 48 seconds a kilometer. Um, and that's pretty close to my 10K pace. So basically I did a 6K tempo at my 10K pace. So pretty good there. And then right after that, I went right into uh, four minutes, excuse me, four times one minute uh, at 5.30 pace. So this is about my 3K race pace. At least I think it's my 3K race pace. I haven't raced a 3K. Uh, since high school, but uh, I ran it at five minutes, 30 seconds a mile or 325 a kilometer with uh, 30 seconds rest in between. So a really, really good workout there. I was happy with it, especially because I was quite sick. And again, it was about three or four degrees Celsius, you know, 39 degrees. It's not that cold for many people who are watching this in different parts of Europe or, or the northern part of the States. But for me, it's cold. Um, and I persevered through it. I couldn't breathe that well, but I found that if I have a cold, I can run through it without too much difficulty. It doesn't seem to affect the performance. Now, if I have a fever, then all bets are off. That's when I stay home and try and recover. But if there's no fever and just a head cold, uh, it turns out the performance doesn't seem to be that adversely affected. So anyways, Wednesday, uh, 40 minutes, again, just another easy four and a half mile, you know, 7K run uh, to recover from the day before. And then Thursday, an easy run, one hour here, uh, seven miles, 11 kilometers. Now there were some strides in there. Um, I usually a few days a week will have, you know, 10 strides, maybe at 20 seconds, you know, at a 800 meter race pace effort. So not an all out sprint, but enough to really kind of work on the mechanics. And then Friday, uh, that was the second hard workout of the week. And this one was a killer. <clears throat> so if you put all the warm up and cool down aside, um, there was three core pieces to it. And the first one was really hard. It was 18 by one minute, uh, at my, what I think is my 5k race pace. So that was five minutes, 40 seconds per mile or three minutes, 30 seconds per kilometer. And there was only a 30 second rest in between. So this was quite tough, but I hit every single one of these. Uh, and my times did not degrade from start to finish. It was pretty even effort. So I was really, really ecstatic about that. And then from there, uh, it went right into seven by 30 seconds of hill repeats. Uh, pretty steep grade, I would say 7% or so. Uh, and then just a one minute jog back, did that seven times. And then went right into seven by 20 second strides. Again, at my kind of 800 meter race pace effort. Um, so not all out sprints again, but really working on the form uh, and the mechanics. 
So that was a tough, tough workout and I was super happy that I was able to complete it. Then Saturday, uh, which was yesterday, was uh, just a, another hour and this was easy, uh, seven miles and 11 kilometers. And then Sunday, which is today. So um, there were two parts to it. In the morning, uh, I did 17 miles or 27 kilometers. It was an easy effort, uh, like for me, 230 watts or, you know, probably 30, 40 seconds slower per mile for my marathon pace or maybe, you know, 15, 20 seconds per kilometer uh, slower than my marathon pace. Um, but it was on hills the whole way and I did climb a lot of elevation. It was mostly on trails. And the cool thing about it was there was a representative from Hoka One One and they allowed us to try because uh, I was running with my running uh, group and they allowed us to try the shoes for the whole run. So I ran in the Speed Goat 3s uh, for the entire uh, distance uh, and I can report they are virtually identical to the Speed Goat 2. So if you're a Speed Goat 2 fan and you're worried about the next model, I think they made some improvements to the upper, but it's basically the same shoe. You'll enjoy it. And then, uh, let's see. So after that, uh, I just finished 15 minutes with my dog, Harry. <laughs> very, very slow, but finished off the week. And so all together, we did eight hours and 15 minutes, which, you know, in the big scheme of things, eight hours of running for a week doesn't seem that lo that much, but turns out your body can adapt uh, and uh, really get better off of eight hours a week. And so it was 61 miles and you know just under 100 kilometers. So a solid week. Um, I was able to hit all the workouts, like I said, and uh, that makes seven weeks in a row where I've hit virtually everything. And I'm really excited about that. The other thing that's uh, interesting too is the peak of my, this training cycle is only eight hours and 55 minutes. So in a couple of weeks, I'll hit that. Uh, so that's only 40 minutes more per week uh, than I did now. So I'll probably max out at around, I would say about 66 miles for the week, or that's probably another 10 kilometers. So, so maybe 108 kilometers, something like that for the week. Uh, and that will, be my, that will be my peak that I'll hold for a little bit. And then two weeks before the marathon, I'll start to taper. Okay, so one other update. Uh, I'm tracking a lot of statistics, um, but two of the key statistics, at least for the Tin Man training program, are my paces uh, for threshold, which is the pace, uh, what is it? It's probably my 5K pace plus 20 or 30 seconds per mile. So I guess that would be uh, my 5K pace plus about uh, 10, 15 seconds or so per kilometer. Um, so a pretty, pretty hard effort. And then the critical velocity, which is the pace that I should be able to hold for uh, a race of about 30 to 35 minutes. So for me, that's pretty close to my 8K uh, race pace. And as you can see, when I started training, I was actually in decent shape. I, I was at 620 a mile for my threshold, which was 356 a kilometer. And my critical velocity was 615 a mile, uh, which is 353 per kilometer. So pretty decent shape. Um, and where am I today? Well, as of this week, and uh, I did a threshold run, and last week I did critical velocity. So let's look at the paces. So it turns out that uh, my threshold run, as I did this Tuesday, or last Tuesday, I suppose, six minutes, seven seconds a mile, which is 348 a kilometer. Likewise, my critical velocity dropped down to six minutes, two seconds. So that means uh, 345 uh, a kilometer. Um, so I think that's pretty close to my race pace. So on both accounts, it was the exact same improvement, 3.4%. So that's great. Um, I'm not exactly sure I can hold these paces for 35 minutes, critical velocity or the threshold. Um, but we're going to find out soon because I finally have a race coming up on, um, uh, let's see, when is that race? It's on February 17th, I think, and it's a 15 K. And it's quite hilly, so it's probably at least four minutes slower than a 15K would be if it were flat, judging from times I saw from uh, runners that are similar to me. Um, but it'll be great because I'll finally be able to test uh, what kind of power I can hold for a, basically a one-hour race, which 
is pretty close to what's called a functional threshold power or stride calls it critical power. I think they're slightly different, but pretty close. And the reason that's important is it turns out when uh, people, and I found this last year, when you run the marathon, you can basically hold just under 90% of that functional threshold power or, or critical power. So once I establish what that one hour uh, threshold is for power, I should be able to multiply that by you know 0 0.9 and find out exactly the power I can hold for the whole marathon. Okay, so that was a quick update for where I am. Like I said, overall, I'm really happy with the progress. The thing that's kind of eating me in the back of my mind a little bit is I just don't know yet what my true marathon pace is at this moment. You see, I haven't done any marathon pace running at all. In fact, I think I only have two or three workouts in total for the whole 18 weeks where I'm running at my uh, goal marathon pace. The first of those I believe is in about two weeks time. So I'll get a handle as to how hard, you know, a, uh, three hour marathon pace actually feels. Um, I'm hoping it feels pretty easy because I've done so much of my quality workouts at my 8K or my 10K or maybe closer to my half marathon pace. Um, so I'm hoping that that marathon pace does indeed feel quite slow to me. So just a quick note to let you know that I am working on a pretty interesting video. You see, when I did that crazy interval workout that 18 by one minute, I wanted to test something. So I ran it, of course, with my uh, stride power meter, but I also ran it with uh, a, a chest strap, a heart rate monitor, uh, and my Apple Watch 4 uh, optical heart rate monitor. And I wanted to check a few things, uh, and there were some results that were really surprising to me. So I'm looking forward to sharing those with you as soon as I can edit that video, which I hope is uh, Tuesday, Wednesday this week. So stay tuned for that. Okay, so that's it for today. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you liked what you saw, go ahead and click the like button. If you really liked what you saw, then go ahead and click subscribe uh, and that little bell right next to it so you'll be instantly notified every time I upload a new video. And you can follow me on my journey as I try and break three hours for the marathon and set a personal record at age 48. So we'll see you all next time, okay? Bye-bye.